So, good morning, everyone. My name is Jose Carlos Cuadrado, uh, and I'm very, very happy to be here. Well, first of all, I'm very honored to be the first speaker. Usually, you invite the first speaker to warm the things up in order for the great speakers that come afterwards. So, thank you very much on that. So, today, I would like to talk a little bit about shaping the future, how the innovative leadership and vision can change the world uh, for the next generation. Uh, a word of, uh, of notice, I did this presentation, but I have a co-pilot. Uh, I have an artificial intelligence uh, engine that helped me make reality part of what I've just presented. Thank you very much. Now I can see you. It's much nicer. <laughs> anyway, so first of all, let's have a look at the engineering of the future. So I described it. I said all the characteristics that it should have. And well, and this is the result. As you can see, handsome. All engineers are handsome. This is clear. It will continue to be handsome. But it's able to do uh, all kinds of interdisciplinarity uh, usage, uh, usage of tools, do engineering design, of course. It's an engineering. And this is basically a reality that is going to exist based on what we know today. However, how are we going to create this engineer? Because this engineer of the future needs to come from somewhere, and it comes from the universities. The question is, what can universities do to build up this, this future engineer? Of course, uh, they have to be wonderful, like the one that we are now. But besides that, they have to have a lot of characteristics which will help them to build these uh, new generation leaders. First of all, the university needs to establish a vision, emphasize of innovation, interdisciplinarity, collaboration, and real-world impact. The idea is that you should not look just what is important in your corner, in your bubble, but you should look at the world all the time and look for the vision on that. Foster a culture of, of innovation, an environment that encourages experimentation, that where it's okay to make mistakes, where creativity and risk-taking is the key. Well, I'm not proposing that you build up this very strange complex and where you might fall. What I'm just trying to illustrate through this image is that the idea is that the university is a good sandbox for the future engineer. Also invest in faculty development. The faculty should stay updated on the latest trends. <clears throat> no one can do anything if they don't know exactly what is the best practice, what has been done around the world. And these uh, trends of engineering education, they change quite, quite fast. Promote interdisciplinarity collaboration, as I said. Encourage collaboration with other fields. Again, don't put the university into silos. Uh, when you are in university, you should be able to connect and work together with all different fields. Not just on paper, but on reality. Because that's what's needed outside. That's what's needed when you graduate. You will not work in silos uh, in your life. Integrate experiential learning, hands on. Engineering is about hands on. It's about be able to do project-based learning and to understand how the reality is never as neat as in the books. And that's a key point in terms of pushing forward for uh, a university that wants these future engineers leaders. Embrace technology. Explore innovative tools. Look at me. I cannot draw a single cat in a table. And I can show you all those wonderful pictures which were uh, drawn by my directions. One tool, one artificial intelligence tool, helped me sh share with you much more than I can do with words. And definitely much better than the drawings I could, I could make. Promote div diversity and inclusion. That's a key point nowadays. In our world, uh, a world where the peace is more and more required, environment that celebrates diversity of thought, background, and experience is fundamental in preparing all of you for the future, for the future work as engineers. Of course, measure and assess the impact. 
uh, if you do not access your curricula, if you do not see the effectiveness, if you do not see how they are preparing the professionals, uh, you have problems. This is usually done through accreditation. Accredit your programs. Make sure that they are guaranteeing uh, a better future for your graduates and a lead to, uh, leading to this engineering thing. Stay agile and adaptive. Monetary trends and emerge technology. Don't be over bureaucratic. Uh, just be f easy to make changes. Don't need for three uh, meeting councils every day in order to do things. Make sure that you adjust to the needs as fast as you can. And of course, a very important point. The faculty should lead by example. They should be the innovators should be the leaders. They should have the behavior that is fundamental uh, for the motivating the future visionaries and the future uh, leaders. If your teacher is not a leader, it will, it's very hard for you to uh, really adjust to this and to be motivated on that side. So now, the key question. How are your professors? Uh, I'm taking a a moment's pause so you can think about it. Please do not answer. Okay. Well, some of them for sure are old school. They are just like, well, they are just like they were taught. They, that's what they've seen. If, you, if, you, if this looks like someone of your colleagues or, or your teachers, don't mention it, please. This is artificial intelligence generated. It is not supposed to, to mean anyone. But the idea is those are the teachers who teach as, as they were taught. Basically, they have no new concept and they think that the way as the world is today is the way when they were before. But then you also have those teachers which are the advanced ones, those like that. Those that look at all the gadgets and they try to build up your classroom as a very interactive kind of thing and or using all the elements. And all of this ask you again the question, which one of them is, should be your teacher? Which one of them should have the characteristics that you need? Are they the ones that you need? They can be good, they can be bad. Again, the, regardless of the environment and the experience, there are good teachers and bad teachers everywhere. Good professors and bad professors. The question is, are they engineering educators? And that's the concept I'm trying to bring today to you. The concept that an engineer educator is not just a professor. is someone that regardless of her domain of expertise, knows and has aware of all the transversal uh, needs of the world. Ethical considerations in public safety, supply chain vulnerabilities, sustainability and environmental impact, globalization and workforce the, the diversity, infrastructure resilience, understand that care innovations, rapid technological advancements, access to, to clean water, cybersecurity and data privacy, and energy transition. All of these are very good buzzwords. You hear them all the time. What is so special about this? Well, the special element is that these are no longer specific topics. These are transversal to all the domains, to all the engineering disciplines. Regardless where you are and what you do as a job or as an engineer, you need to be aware of all of those. All of those things actually help you to get better as an engineer and to be better as a future professional engineer. The main problem is educators, professors, they can teach what they do not know. And sometimes people forget about that. Ah, I'm from last century. I graduated from last century. Well, actually, last millennium, but I'm not saying that because I don't want to be depressed. But the idea is, uh, when we were taught, we had different perception of life, of society, of reality. And of course, if I stay in, my, in the bubble, and it's very easy to stay inside the bubble in the universities, then of course, I was never exposed to the rest of the world, and I cannot grow. So it's important that they know what, what, what's happening outside. A group of leading organizations around the world created the concept of engineering educator registry under the United Nations. The concept was precisely that, 
to make sure that the professors are evaluated if they are or not very good engineering educators. To be a professor, you have to be employed in university. To be an engineer educator, you need to be evaluated. You need to be periodically and independently evaluated uh, about their competencies. How are you as an educator? So we built up this, and actually it's quite successful, more than 4,000 uh, engineer educators across the world and uh, in over 36 countries. So it's already growing a lot. Hopefully we'll get to, to Jordan also. So what should you as students do? Well, first of all, you must be aware of this, this change between professor and engineer educator. And search for registered engineer educators as your professors. Of course, some of them will appear in your university and they will help you to do that. But if not, just go online, just look for their presentations, just get the information, it's out there. Just need to use it in order to understand how each one of the topics can be mastered. So to finalize, I would say the idea is that with this, you can experience innovating leadership and vision, and you can have this kind of classrooms where it's much, uh, they are much bigger than just the classroom. They are the entire world. They consider all the needs for shaping the future. Thank you very much in my name, in the name of artificial intelligence. Thank you. If you want to know more, well, just uh, use as everyone do, just scan the QR code. <laughs>